what we're always exploring together in these meetings, we're, we're questioning appearances. We have appearances. But what are those appearances? What are those appearances really? Is the appearance of a pen really a pen? What happens when we look beyond that label, pen? The same goes for any apparent object, any appearance. Most people think that the world is as it appears. This has been called a state of ignorance, this overlooking what is and buying into concepts about what is. And we could call ignorance the opposite of wisdom. And ignorance is basically just a state of ignoring the obvious. Interestingly, the word ignore comes from a Latin verb, which means to overlook. So ignore means to overlook. On one hand, wisdom involves the humility of acknowledging our intellectual limitations, looking beyond our ideas. They are released naturally and organically when you see them for what they are. It's not like you have to let go somehow. And wisdom involves the recognition that we don't have the ability to grasp the essence of anything, the essence of the pen or anything else. On the other hand, it involves a profound understanding that comes from direct experience, going into direct experience. So a deep recognition that transcends only intellectual comprehension. And although our intellectual attempts fall short of encapsulating the true nature of things, experiential knowing provides an innate, unmediated understanding or recognition. Because it's through lived experience, through sensory experience, that we find this truth, this non-conceptual knowledge. What do we have to work with in seeking to understand the true nature of things? We have this, don't we? We only ever have this. The space of experience appears as appearances. And those appearances are seemingly solidified through concepts, through conceptualizing those shapes of what is. What are we really aware of prior to any mental processing or, or interpretation? That's really the question that we keep coming back to. We're left with just what is this wordless what is. So if we explore experience, we're aware of what we could call sense data, the phenomenal qualities of experience, the way things look, feel, smell, taste and sound. And these are also modes or synonyms of awareness, aren't they? Seeing, feeling, smelling, tasting, hearing. These are all words for awareness. Do we ever actually experience external objects? Or is it that we just experience the sense data? Is it that we just experience the sensing? So, for example, I actually find no evidence of a laptop beyond this sense data, beyond these sort of possible sensations. All of these physical objects, including the sense of self, are constricted out of sensation. Or we could say sensing, to appreciate it as a, as a verb-like process. So I find that the laptop is fabricated from the same fabric that sensing is fabricated from. We can't say what it is, but we can say that it is. And I'm calling that suchness awareness, consciousness, or experiencing. But again, these are just pointers, these are just words. I can't say what anything is, but there is an actuality. There is a positive, affirming isness, but it's indescribable. This is the appreciation of the nothingness, the no-thingness of what this is. We're not left with a barren void. We're just seeing beyond the concepts and thereby appreciating 
what this really is, and we are left with an isness, a suchness. So this laptop, and you know, this applies to whatever you're experiencing and exploring with your inquiry. This laptop is fabricated from experience. And this doesn't refute the possibility of the laptop being fabricated of something else other than the suchness. It just reveals that I have no evidence of a laptop. I can't find it. I can only find the suchness that seems to take this, this shape, this, this apparent form with a label on top, laptop. So usually we don't observe things and then kind of get habituated by them. We project concepts. Who is projecting the concepts? I don't find someone projecting concepts. And if you do find someone, if we do find a center, a person, an individual, a self, then what is that made of? What is that really? Delve into that. That's what's given. Don't try to get rid of it or bypass it. Use it as a way to discern truth, to discern what is real. So in a way, maybe we can never know what this is, what the world is. Maybe we can never know what the world is really like because all we have are appearances. So usually we have a model of the world, but we have no way of knowing how closely that model matches the world itself. We don't really know if our model, our conceptual model, is anything like what is. A wise person, from an empiricist standpoint, is someone who remains open to new information, as well as someone who has the willingness to let go of and revise their understanding. It's more like those ideas are naturally released and that can be recognised. So the thoughts come and go. It's only a laptop when it's named a laptop. But before that, what is it? It's just potential, isn't it? It's just empty potential. But it's full of what it is, what it truly is. It's full of isness, suchness. This indescribable non-material essence. So we have to explore it closely to strip away all that has been projected onto it. All these ideas. This process of sensing is all we have. And it's actually neutral and can be called anything, can apparently be shaped any way. But that shaping and that naming doesn't change what it actually is. According to empiricism, the existence of the laptop is unprovable and its nature is unknowable. But there is an actuality here. We can't deny that. And it's the same with what we could call the human self or the ego of a self-centre, the me. Really, there's no such thing as a human self, but there is actuality temporarily appearing that way. And we can see it as a kind of theoretical or hypothetical entity, inferred rather than directly perceived. When you directly perceive it, just like the glass, just like the laptop or the pen or anything else, you don't find the label, you don't find the me. So what, what's here for you, what's given for you, what really is when you consider what's appearing? Just experience it. You are experiencing, you don't have to switch experiencing on. Experiencing is already switched on, always on. And apparently within it, there are experiences. And these experiences are not apart from experiencing. They can't be. There's no distance, there's no separation between the, the unlimited capacity of experiencing and the experiences that appear. We could say that sensory experiences, the hearing, smelling, tasting and so on, are a kind of guide to actually what is true. And the more deeply and closely we explore the process of perception, the more uncertainty there is about what it is that we're perceiving. It gets really weird and, and open-ended, fractal-like. There's no foundation, there's not an ultimate flaw or conclusion that you find 
it's totally open-ended and yet there's actuality there's suchness what is that well the mind can come up with all sorts of conclusions and ideas but they never grasp or contain or define what is whatever it is it's not hidden this is not hidden this is obvious this suchness this isness is is here it's available it's what's given now what is it it can't be said it's mysterious from an intellectual point of view or perspective but absolutely evident from an experiential perspective or knowing so we we learn everything from experience because experience is what we have that's what we've got to work with you know there's an infinity of experience always blossoming into existence into being so wisdom tells us that we know nothing and are nothing it's clearer to say no thing there are no things in actuality but there is experiencing there is consciousness the soul fabric of reality and it's you the word wisdom is closely related to the concept of knowing or seeing in a deeper or more insightful way so wisdom is knowing wisdom is seeing it's kind of like a vision or seeing and clouded by these preconceived notions that we're so accustomed to that we're so used to investing our attention into so the veil of ignorance of overlooking is lifting and just see that the true nature of things can shine through can be known it's not about accumulating new ideas not about accumulating knowledge in the traditional sense in the conventional sense of this idea of wisdom it's about going beyond the limitations of ordinary knowing so this is about moving from a state of knowing about to simply knowing from conceptualization to direct perception and it's here in this direct perception free of mental projections that we find this new knowing which is not new at all but it may seem new when you explore any appearance you just find this perpetual process of experiencing of consciousness check it out for yourself every experience is a manifestation of this actuality every single appearance including the sense of self including the sense of not getting it including the feeling of feeling frustrated because it doesn't seem to be registering in your own experience that too that's included so you can't go wrong because you are not an individual that can get it right or wrong you are beyond any duality beyond any idea of right and wrong just step out of your habitual thought patterns for a moment step into this direct experience of this timeless moment this is wisdom the sanskrit word yana means knowledge means understanding but it's this deeper knowing this deeper understanding that comes from discernment it's this direct experience of reality and the word leela means amusement means play and sometimes leela appears as maya and maya simply means magic so this is a magic show for your amusement for your play all of this we could call maya magic or we could call maya ignorance and it's said that ignorance has two innate qualities veiling and projection the veiling or concealing quality creates the appearance of a limited self and external objects in an external world and the projecting quality creates the believability of this external world suffering starts when we forget that we are the totality playing in this magical appearance and actually ultimately the suffering is part of that 
appearance, that show, it's all included. It can't be anything else other than reality, the totality, what you are. So we could see Maya as ignorance and this power of concealing, obscuring and distorting what is. Or we can see it as this magical celebration, this actuality of experiencing. You can experience, and what are you experiencing but yourself? You're only ever experiencing yourself. And that's when this appearance is seen as this revelation of being. So in some ways, ignorance conceals, but it also reveals. It reveals reality through all of these appearances. So you don't have to try to get rid of anything. Just see the layers of conditioning for what they are. Go into each one, like peeling an onion. What do you find at the centre? You find this no thingness. And actually you find the no thingness at every layer, including the skin, when you really delve into it. So the way to awaken to this wisdom we're talking about is to recognize what you are, because you are reality. And what you are is what all of these appearances are. No separation. The mind is not a barrier to understanding. It's this transparent medium or mode through which the light of true knowledge, yana, knowledge beyond concepts and, and forms, shines forth. And this is the heart of wisdom. It's where knowing and being meet and where the mysteries of existence are not attempted to be solved, but lived and celebrated. That's what's always happening. You are living every appearance, celebrating every appearance in this magic show, in this divine celebration of being. <laughs>